I believe we should go to the moon. That's one small step for man. It will man. not be one man. It will be an entire nation. One giant leap for mankind. Nearly 50 years ago, American astronauts with Apollo 11 became the first people ever to step foot on the moon. And now decades after that celebrated mission, some of the spacecraft that made it all the way to the moon is on display right here in Ohio. 13 ABC's Michael Bratton shows us around the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton, where you can get up close to the engineering marvels that got us to space. From massive rockets to test planes, the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force's Space Gallery is an impressive sight. But among all the astonishing displays sit some unassuming vessels that helped set the tone. The Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo spacecraft all played vital roles in getting U.S. astronauts to the moon nearly 50 years ago. When you look at those three spacecraft, you can see the progression of human spaceflight, at least American human spaceflight. Museum historian Dr. Doug Lantry has dedicated his life to studying each one. If you look at all of these missions through Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo, one set of objectives built upon the other until you get to actually landing on the moon. While each mission played its part, the museum is particularly proud of the Apollo 15 command module, the fourth to land on the moon. A three-man All Air Force crew traveled there and back in this gumdrop-shaped vessel that's about the size of a minivan. It was a cramped space, but then again, these were extraordinary people, extraordinarily well-trained, mission-focused, disciplined. In addition to the spacecraft, the museum also displays various NASA artifacts and astronaut equipment, including spacesuits. Along with celebrating accomplishments on the moon, the museum also highlights our next advancements in space exploration with displays like this space shuttle exhibit. It just adds that extra level um, that makes it extra special and, and uh, more inspiring to them. Cindy Henry is a longtime educator at the museum, using displays to help teach free math and science courses to people of all ages. Did I hear teamwork? You learned teamwork. Yes, very good. We try to make them as much hands-on as possible because we feel it's really important that they get experience with building things. While there's plenty to see and do, Henry says the shuttle exhibit is always a favorite, as it includes a real NASA crew compartment trainer. You can get up in there and go and look into the mid-deck and see um, what the living quarters were like and the working quarters. You can uh, go up some stairs and look into the flight deck and to see where the astronauts actually uh, piloted the shuttle. By showing and teaching America success in space, the museum's hope is to inspire future generations to continue to reach for the heavens. The point is to be inspired that you too can join in something larger than yourself to achieve tremendous goals. That's what this is all about. In Dayton, Michael Bratton, 13 ABC Action News. Well, an incredible moment in American history, mm -hmm. and this July 20th, the museum will pay tribute to the 50th anniversary of the moon landing with a space-themed family day. There will be model rocket builds, presentations, and other fun activities. Admission to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force is free. And we invite you to join us. Join 13 ABC on July 17th for one small step as we celebrate the contributions from Northwest Ohio that helped mankind reach the moon, and we look to the discoveries that still lie ahead.